We're here on the steps in the basement with John <laughs> Leo to talk about Rosemary's Baby and someone who was not even nominated for a role in that movie who really should have been. Yes. Hey, Nick. Um, we're going to talk about Mia Farrow in Rosemary's Baby. She gets one of the chapters in my new book, Not Even Nominated, 40 Overlooked Co-Stars of Oscar-Winning Performances. Now, in this case, it was Ruth Gordon who won as Best Supporting Actress for this movie. Um, and many of her scenes involve M Mia Farrow. And it is kind of mind-blowing that Mia Farrow wasn't up for Best Actress for this movie. It's uh, one of those roles where you're in just about every moment of this terrific movie. And she's amazing in it. And she gets to... Uh, start as a kind of what seems to be a fragile young woman, newlywed, trying to start a life with her husband, John Cassavetes, and decorate her apartment. And um, it, it, it all seems so normal. Of course, we it's a horror movie for adults in which she's going to be the mother of Satan's child. But what's fascinating about what happens to this character and how it's played by Pharaoh is that she's actually a powerhouse of strength. Uh, every time she's tested, she is going to fight for this child's life that growing inside of her as the forces around her seem to be threatening her. And they are. She's not crazy. They certainly are. And... Um, the reserves of strength that come through in this performance, it's sort of like mama bear, um, and it increases and increases. And so what is a sort of seemingly breakable young woman is actually this um, force of nature. And she's extraordinary in every sort of um, incremental moment of that transition throughout the story. And she's very young in this one, she's isn't she? She's very young. How old She oh, had... Um, uh, she's like 23 or 22. Uh, she is, of course, Hollywood royalty, the uh, daughter of actress Maureen O'Sullivan and director John Farrow. And she was already famous when she made this movie from Peyton Place, the nighttime soap that was so popular. And she had recently married Frank Sinatra and their marriage ended during the making of this movie. Um, Who would but, want to be married to Satan's mother? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the, one of the issues. <laughs> um, but she uh, proved she could hold the screen, the big screen, not just the small screen. And um, like I said, it's, it's a kind of magnificent performance in a movie that holds up beautifully. It really is one of the great horror movies and certainly one of the greatest for adults. Um, and uh, she... Uh, the, the, also, the way she, we, the way she absorbs the disintegration of her marriage, too, as he is less and less supportive and more and more suspicious in his behavior. And uh, she's, no, um, she's no weakling. And like I said, it's, uh, she, she's really terrific. And she would prove later, again, in the years with the Woody Allen movies, she was also an extraordinary uh, comic actress, and she could play all kinds of parts for Woody Allen, um, Broadway Danny Rose, and the Purple Rose of Cairo, and she could be so good no matter what kind of part he gave her. So it wasn't just about these sort of frail-looking women who have to fight for their lives, although she, as I said, was extraordinary doing that. Um, she could also be very funny. And Mia Farrow was never nominated for an Oscar, which does seem kind of extraordinary. And there she is uh, on the cover from Rosemary's Baby. Um, you would think, if not for Rosemary's Baby, then at least one of those Woody Allen movies where, like I said, she really proved, wow, she can kind of play anything. And she's still going strong. As I'm speaking, she's on Broadway right now in a play called The Roommate with Patty nice. Capone. And she's in her late 70s, so she is still something. Yeah, you forget that people that you know from acting like they're other people have real problems in their own lives. And so to know that she was doing some of these things when a another person might have took time off or quit, but she found maybe refuge in her work. Well, this, I mean, I'm sure there was the element of ambition in terms of breaking up with Sinatra. Or he didn't want her to do this movie, but she knew this was the role of a lifetime and an opportunity of a lifetime. And she was right because the marriage with Sinatra probably wouldn't have lasted anyway. And why didn't he want to do the movie? Uh, well, he wanted to stay home and cook? 
I, the, 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 that's been implied that he wanted more of a wife. Uh -huh. but, but, but the legacy of the actual movie Rosemary's Baby is, uh, I mean, what I'm saying is she made the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, uh, she's cast perfectly and she delivers everything you could want from, from that character. So she never got a nomination from the Academy, but she got a very nice explanation of our whole career and this particular part from you, John. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you, Nick.